And it's time for your Asia business update. China has hit back against sweeping U.S. restrictions on chip exports. It has filed its official complaint with the dispute settlement body at the World Trade Organization. The Chinese Commerce Ministry accused the U.S. of practicing trade protectionism and abusing sanctions. Beijing described these actions as a threat to the stability of global supply chains. The two superpowers have long faced off over a range of issues, including technology, trade, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and human rights. The move comes just weeks after U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping pledged to repair frayed relations at a summit in Bali last month. China's complaint on U.S. chip export curbs comes days after a WTO ruling against Washington in a separate suit about metal tariffs that have been brought by China, among others. Now, Japan and the Netherlands are reportedly teaming up with the U.S. to curb advanced chip-making machinery exports to China. Now, Bloomberg reports the countries are expected to announce measures that are similar to those rolled out by the U.S. in October. The move adds Japan's Tokyo Electron and Dutch firm ASML to the list of American gear suppliers that are already restricted from exporting to China. Now, the three countries are the top sources of machinery and expertise needed to make advanced semiconductors. The three-nation alliance would represent a near total blockade on equipment needed for cutting-edge chips. Now, Tokyo Electron shares that's down less than a percent this hour, and the Japanese chip supplier gets nearly 30% of its revenue from China. SK Hynix shares have also recovered, and the South Korean chip firm gets almost 40% of its sales from China. Separately, Indonesia has appealed a WTO ruling in a dispute over Jakarta's ban on nickel ore exports. The WTO panel ruled last month in favour of the European Union. It says Indonesia's prohibition of nickel exports and a domestic processing requirement violated global trade rules. Now, President Joko Widodo earlier pledged to push ahead with its mineral downstreaming policy. He said Indonesia does not want to continue exporting raw materials despite the WTO ruling. The EU launched its challenge before the trade body in November 2019, and it argued Indonesia's export restrictions unfairly harms its stainless steel industry. Indonesia, the world's largest nickel producer, banned the metals ore exports at the start of 2020. FTX founder and former CEO Sam Bankman fried has been arrested in the Bahamas after he was criminally charged by U.S. authorities. He's being held in custody pending an extradition process. Now, prosecutors in New York have filed a criminal indictment for wire fraud, securities fraud and money laundering. Separately, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission have also authorized charges against Bankman fried for violations of securities laws. Now, the arrest and the filing of charges is the first concrete move by regulators to hold individuals accountable for the collapse of the cryptocurrency exchange. Now, Mr. Bankman Freed had been scheduled to testify remotely at a widely anticipated hearing of the U.S. House Financial Services Committee later today. And our correspondent, Ira Spitzer, with more on how this development may affect the legislative probe into FTX. The uh, attorney for the Southern District of New York, the federal attorney's office, uh, saying that this arrest came at the request of that office and that this is based on a sealed indictment and that the office will move to unseal that indictment on Tuesday morning, or Tuesday morning in the U.S., I should say. So that corresponds, of course, with this scheduled congressional testimony of Sam Bank Freed, which he was supposed to do virtually from the Bahamas. We have no idea right now whether that testimony will go ahead. It seems uh, somewhat improbable that after this arrest that it could happen, but we have no confirmation that it is not happening. And certainly people desperately want to hear more from Sam Bankman Freed. Now, we've heard a lot of media appearances from the former CEO of the bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange FTX over the past couple of weeks, but we haven't had this testimony before Congress where congressional leaders are supposed to try and figure out what wrong with FTX. There are allegations, of course, that the trading firm or the exchange was using 
its customers money to finance some risky bets and that this whole uh, house of cards ultimately came crashing down. Now, Bankman Freed has denied that he knowingly committed any wrongdoing. Well, a U.S. congressional committee investigating the collapse of FTX is set to hear testimony from the new court-appointed CEO of the defunct crypto exchange. John Ray III will be giving U.S. lawmakers more details on the management disaster that's led to the collapse of FTX. The House probe will attempt to piece together how Batman Freed's company imploded and left customers with millions in losses. The leadership of the disgraced crypto mogul will be the focus of Mr. Ray's testimony. His opening remarks published today criticized the utter failure of corporate controls at every level of the organization. FTX, he said, lacked financial statements and internal governance. Mr. Ray will also detail other unacceptable management practices in the defunct exchange. This includes allowing Bankman Freed's trading vehicle Alameda Research to tap into the crypto exchange's coffers without any effective limits. Now, that rapid collapse has sent shockwaves through the digital assets industry, prompting the largest Bitcoin outflows ever in November. Now, fearing for the safety of their assets, investors pulled nearly $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoins out of exchanges last month. And that's according to the Financial Times. Now, Bitcoin prices have also plunged 65% this year. It's really been the fall from uh, the fall of Icarus, really, in crypto. If you look, we are down uh, close to two-thirds in terms of value from where we started the year. And there's been a succession, uh, succession of events that have been pretty dramatic for the space and the industry as an asset class. I think it's really been a, a pretty terrible repricing where we've had to reevaluate the capacity for the industry to self-regulate and self-govern. Well, cryptocurrencies are moving higher as regulators sought accountability on the FTX implosion. Bitcoin staying well above the 17,000 threshold that's up almost 1.4%. Ethereum is rising about 2% now, while Ripple's XRP is gaining ground by about 1.3%. Meanwhile, Hong Kong stocks advancing after the city removed all COVID restrictions on inbound travellers. Now, the easing would be a boon for Hong Kong's economy, which has been hobbled by more than two years of COVID-related border restrictions. Stocks also rose before a US report that's expected to show inflation slowed last month. Now, let's take a look at the Hang Seng Index that's now trading up 0.6% and the Shanghai Composite is also up slightly at 0.6%. Now, the Shenzhen Composite, that's going down 0.2%, trading under 30. Now, it's also green across the board for Hong Kong's biggest e-commerce and leisure stocks. We see Meituan gaining about 2.6%, and Alibaba Group, that's also advancing 0.06%. And Macau Casino Operator Sands China, that's up as well, almost 4% now. Now, Galaxy Entertainment, that's also added also. While Hong Kong was never subject to the same extent of restrictions as mainland China, it had kept up its own elimination policy and weeks-long government quarantines. And that's until a devastating outbreak made the measures redundant at the start of this year. Apple says it has invested more than $100 billion in its Japanese supply network over the last five years. The firm says it has boosted its spending on suppliers in Japan by more than 30% since 2019 across a network of nearly 1,000 companies. Sony, which provides camera sensors for iPhone products, is one of the biggest suppliers. 29 Japanese suppliers have also committed to converting to renewable energy for Apple-related businesses by 2030. Now, shares in Indonesia's GoTo surged more than 20% in early trade after a lockup of its major shareholders expired last month. It has since trimmed some of those gains and it's trading up 15% at this hour. GoTo lost nearly 60% in market value over the past month after a lockup on its major shareholder stakes expired. Analysts warned that GoTo is burning $1.5 billion a year and would exhaust net cash on its balance sheet by the end of 2023's financial year. But the company says it has enough funds until it reaches profitability. Experts say the share price bounced back today. It's most likely due to speculation that a major white knight investor might emerge or that the company could become a takeover target.
And Asian investors are awaiting key inflation data out of the U.S. that's due later today. The Nikkei 225 briefly topped the 28,000 level for the first time since the start of the month. The Kospi has turned lower and Australia's ASX that ended the day firmer by one-tenth of a percent. Well, investors are waiting for the final U.S. consumer inflation release for this year. Economists polled by Bloomberg see November's CPI rising 7.3% on year. That's decelerating from the 7.7% in October. Core inflation, which excludes food and energy, that's expected to rise 6.1%. Now, the data comes ahead of the Federal Reserve's meeting this week, and that's the last one for this year. The world's most influential central bank has hit the U.S. economy with its steepest interest rate hikes in decades as it tries to fix the cost of living crisis. Markets are pricing in a 50 BPS hike this week. And a U.S.-based think tank has reported that North Korea and Russia have resumed trade. And it comes after Pyongyang imposed one of the world's strictest border lockdowns since the pandemic. 38 North, which monitors North Korea, says satellite imagery shows piles of goods at a train station that's near the border with Russia. The images were taken about a month after trains were reported crossing the border for the first time since the pandemic began. The activity comes amid reports of arms sales from Pyongyang to Moscow. And still ahead on Asia now, looking eastwards for opportunities. Britain's High Commissioner outlines his country's long-term foreign policy vision with Asia in the picture in a CNA exclusive interview. And also looking for opportunities, Pakistan. Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Sardari speaks about unlocking the economic potential between Islamabad and ASEAN.